What supports are in place for community partners and employers? Collaboration in experiential learning opportunities ensures the best outcomes for our students and our site-based organizations. During this process, community partners can utilize key supports through their EL collaboration with post-secondary institutions as they seek to maximize their own organizational growth, expand industry deliverables, and support a learner. An effective framework for our community partners provides support in the following areas, general oversight, resources, documentation, policies, and procedures. At no time should an employer or a community partner find themselves on their own. In instances of both success and struggle with experiential opportunities, continuous engagement and communication between all parties through a formalized process will provide support in day-to-day -day work and the larger framework of the learning model. Brock University, what we've done is we've set up a process flow and some information so that it's an easy one-stop shop for, for our faculty and staff who are arranging these um, uh, placements. And in those documents that have a process flow, we also provide them with clear checklists that they can use and the documents that they are just filling in the students' names uh, and having signatures on them and, and what have you. So we've provided clear processing um, documents and uh, the associated checklist that they need to really bring it forward and have a successful placement. It's a project called Senco, the Social Enterprise Network of Central Ontario. Uh, and that is a very intentional network building uh, project that that in all of the different seven different areas where Georgian has a, has a campus, uh, we're also bridging those campuses to the broader communities and working with nonprofits, business leaders, municipal uh, officials, and, and people in those areas uh, to build out the concept of, of social enterprise in those in those areas. It's a big deal. Like it's a big project uh, for for students. So. The assessment starts the day classes start, if you will, in terms of formulating, formulating expectations, linking the expectations with respect to the deliverables right back to the learning objectives and the vocational learning outcomes that are set forth in the course outline and making sure that they understand that at the end of this process it's extremely um, important for them to under, understand that they're working towards uh, a, the ultimate goal of fulfilling these learning outcomes. The students are evaluated exactly the same as they would if it was a fake project. So the rubric that I would use for any of these projects stands the same. The, I'll have to be more flexible in timing because the client doesn't always meet the deadlines that they set out, but everything else remains exactly the same. And it allows you to kind of move up the taxonomy, so I'm never grading on whether they know something or whether they understand it. It's always what their analysis was, what their application was, how they conducted the assessment, and I'll not only be able to see the final product in their work, but I'll have been able to observe the, the pieces and the inputs in. So I observe the way that they interact on site, I observe the way they speak to the client, and so I can provide a lot more in-depth work than if they had run off and done the project separately.